So this video is coming a bit later than I originally wanted to, but considering the responses by Bungie on the launch of Black Armory, I'm kind of glad that I waited. We're going to talk some thoughts on Black Armory, the launch, the follow-up by Bungie, the community response, all that good stuff. Day one of Black Armory rolls around, we get introduced to Ada, the Black Armory NPC. At first, she's super mad at us, and then we show her a key card, and then she's less angry at us, but still kind of angry. Gives us a quest to start looking for a lost forge, and after a few steps, you find it. But, turns out that the forge event starts at 610 power, now 605, and scales up to 630, now 625, by the end of it. So, the only way you were even going to get close to beating it on day one was grinding a bit first, or being a highly coordinated, high-skilled group, and even with that, you still had to use some very specific tactics in order to win. It is similar to an Escalation Protocol situation when Warmind launched, where day one Escalation Protocol felt basically impossible unless you had a nine-man group and you did a bunch of grinding. You can't nine-man the forge, though. You can't really brute force it. After a couple of days, shocker, it got much easier as some people got some levels and it was nerfed a bit, but the day one experience was rough, which killed a lot of the momentum. That is a very different vibe to previous expansions, where you could at least dig through the campaign and mess around with some endgame stuff, not to mention we had strikes, even if they were just story missions and a brief campaign. The big issues were, one, mismanaged expectations by the community and some mismanaged marketing, and two, the lack of ability to actually engage positively with the new stuff on launch day. The community is claiming that this was a marketing issue on Bungie's end, that expectations were not properly set up, and I agree with the community on some of that, although Bungie did make a couple of things very clear, like limited story content, so let's talk about those points. The main issue on day one is that it didn't feel good to load into new content day and have to go grind powerful gear drops just so you could stand a chance in the new stuff. Me, personally, it's what I was doing anyway since I was going for the raid on the first day. Many people did not do that, so if it's new content patch day and you can't do any of the new content, it feels bad. It kills a lot of the day one hype, which I think is the biggest issue people had for day one. It's not a big drop of almost everything day one like old expansions, but a slower trickle of content over the course of the season. Black Armory has basically nothing for anyone not at 600 plus. But then again, it wasn't really designed for people not at 600 in the first place. It was designed with the enthusiast in mind, not really the casual. Is that a good thing? Maybe, you know, shows Bungie is focusing on dedicated players. But I think you need to have something for these slightly less engaged players, even if it is just a forge at a lower light level to give people a taste of what's to come or let people get familiar with the new investment loop or the same investment loop. I don't know why there couldn't have been another lower level difficulty option for the forge for people at, say, 570 or something like that. Even something like 510, 540, 570, 600 could have resolved some day one issues. Maybe make the rewards not scale as high below 570. I say this despite Bungie saying that the forges were designed from the get-go to be an extension of the end game experience. I think the issue is that the community didn't really get a grasp on that fact until Black Armory actually launched because of a lack of clarity. Now, Bungie did follow up to the Forge power level issues by lowering the requirement for the first Forge by five levels, which doesn't sound like a lot, but after the first couple of days is somewhat significant. And they did it one day later, which is a pretty quick turnaround. I'm glad to see them respond quickly. After the first couple of days, I was able to drop into a group with random players just matchmaking, and I cleared the first vault with no problem at all. I do think that this move was a good idea. It's not like they lowered the power requirement down to 580 or anything drastic. You still need to be in the 600s to have an easier time, but that little bump did a lot more than I think people thought it did when they first announced it. Another launch day issue is that players not at the 600 power cap might not feel bothered to level up now, knowing that they need to grind for some amount of potential weeks 
before they're even eligible to participate in Black Armory activities. The only thing that was done to help lesser geared players boost themselves was boosted Prime and Gram rewards, which originally went up to 550 and they just drop more often, which is basically nothing in the grand scheme because 550 to 600 is still a really good chunk of time and is harder than 500 to 550. Bungie has now increased that 550 number to 600 for Prime Engrams, which I think was a very good move. The push to 600 can be tough if you're not super active, and again, I know that these things are designed for active players and not inactive players, but when you raise the level cap in a game, typically you want to give boosts to those lower level players so that they can catch up to the previous cap. A thing I think Bungie could do is raise the power cap of powerful gear drops for every activity by 20 up to 600. So what do I mean by that? Okay, for example, right now, daily powerful gear milestones are significant upgrades up until you hit power level 520. And then after that, the gains are much smaller. Night falls up to 540. I think Dreaming City is up to 540, 560, something like that, and so on. If you boost that daily from 520 to 540, Nightfall from 540 to 560, and so on, this gives those lower level players the ability to boost faster to 600 or 580 or whatever number you want to make it. And then after 600, the significant boosts come from the forges and the raid and primes and exotics, while smaller upgrades are everything else. To put these content drops in perspective, again, content drops, not full expansions, it seems like they're going to work in contrast with how they did with the expansions. The expansions, your Curse of Osiris, Warmind, and others, were extensions to the campaign experience, or the character level experience. So you played Destiny 2, and then you had Endgame, but smushed in between the two were Curse and Warmind, or Dark Below and House of Wolves for D1, with part of those expansions also having Endgame stuff. They both had a campaign, a character level experience, and Endgame, power level experience. With Black Armory, and I assume the rest of the drops, it's Destiny 2 and the Year 1 expansions, then Forsaken, then Forsaken Endgame, and then these content drops. They're not smushed in the middle of anything, they're simply continuations of the power level experience, not the character level experience. Again, I think where the big disconnect happens is in a couple of spots, mainly with regards to expectations or Bungie telling people exactly what is happening. One, more casual players were probably expecting a typical expansion experience, and two, some people didn't really know how Black Armory was going to tie into the Destiny experience, other than the fact that Bungie was focusing less on story and more on endgame and gameplay experiences. I think it's a good move to focus less on story, because the number one complaint about nearly every expansion that's come out, the small ones, has been the story campaign content, how it feels rushed or just not very good or whatever, so Bungie just said, forget it, we'll just save the big story stuff for other times. Totally respect that move, we'll see how well people react to it. But even I, for a while, didn't really know how Bungie was planning on handling things. Even I didn't really go bother to read some of these extra interviews that Bungie did, although that's partly because my life has gotten in the way of me being able to keep up 100%. If someone like me isn't keeping up as much as they should be, then what hope does a casual player have to understand what's happening? You think they're watching Vidox and reading Bungie.net posts? No. Even though Bungie has said that they're trying something new overall, a lot of people were not prepared for that. Whether it ends up being executed well is another story that we can probably talk about when everything from Black Armory is actually out. It also seems like Bungie is trying to figure out a happy medium between giving out entire expansions at once and giving people little bits and pieces over the course of a couple of months. If Black Armory eventually has as much content as something like Warmind, does it make it a failure because it didn't come out all at once? If we were able to race through the entire Black Armory experience in a couple of days, would that make Black Armory a failure? It depends on who you ask. It seems like Black Armory just didn't have enough day one stuff to really satisfy people, especially because of the high light requirement for the average dedicated player. Another thing is just lack of new armor or weapons in other areas. Vanguard nor Crucible had an armor refresh. People are used to that with expansions. People are used to a new strike or two, a new Crucible map or two. Doesn't seem like any of that is happening, although I'm a little more forgiving on the Crucible map part considering we've gotten a few over the course of D2 already. 
No new strike that we know of is kind of weak. Could there be a dungeon lurking? Would that make up for no strike? Maybe, maybe. Wow, Dado, you've sure spoken a lot, but you haven't said anything about what you think. All right. Well, that's because I don't really have much to say on what I think because we haven't seen a whole lot yet. The second forge launched on raid day, but as of this script writing, I haven't done it because I was working on raid guides. I've heard it's a pretty similar experience to the first one though, which doesn't really surprise me at all. The vault on the first day was very challenging, but is now a complete stomp to the surprise of no one at all. I'm not crazy about the forges. I, they're okay, but it's not really anything revolutionary. The raid we'll talk about in another video, but almost one week in, we have two forges with similar gameplay, and that's all we have for, for gameplay stuff. When you have match-made activities, you can only make them so complex because they need to be accessible to the general audience, and I'm not talking just about power level. It doesn't surprise me that these are pretty familiar-feeling activities for that reason. As for whether or not you should invest in the annual pass if you haven't already, I would say at this time, unless you really want to run the raid, you probably don't have to just yet. I would wait until we find out what else comes with Black Armory, how the rest of the content drop pans out, and everything like that. If you aren't close to 600 yet, you definitely don't need to get Black Armory or the Annual Pass at this time. I would wait until you're a bit closer first, and then decide. I anticipate Black Armory to be better when we actually have all of the pieces, I just don't know what those pieces look like or how they'll come together just yet. I don't really think it's fair to call Black Armory as a whole a success or a failure right now compared to anything because Bungie is going for something different this time around. Was the day one hype as good as previous expansions? No, I don't think so. Do I think it'll get better as time goes on? Yeah, that's, that's pretty likely. But will people bother to come back when Black Armory has all of its content out because they had a bad day one experience? Will people not at 600 bother to climb at all if they still have to put in that much work? Mmm, that I'm not too sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Sorry for another very, very long-winded thoughts video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.